to download Python on your computer, just go into your web browser and type in Python download. And it should be the first thing that pops up, python.org, and click on download Python. If you're using Windows, just click on download Python. If you're using a different OS, click one of these links. Once it downloads, it should appear at the bottom or at the top. Just click on the file to open it, and then click on Install Now. And wait for this to load. It should take around one minute. Now that it is complete, just click on Close and then go to the search bar or a Windows icon and type in idle and open up this program. This comes with Python and it allows you to write code. The first window that pops up is the console. Here you can just type in one line commands such as 5 plus 9. Press enter to get a result. But most of the time you'll be wanting to write multiple lines of code at a time. To do this, click on File, New File, or Control N. This will bring you up a script file to write in. First thing I'm going to do is type in print. Print is a function that lets you print something to the screen. I'm going to print test. And then in order to run this, you first need to save it. So go to File, Save, or Control S, and find somewhere on your computer to save it. I'm just going to name it Test, and Save. Then I can go to Run, Run Module, or F5. And over here on the console, it outputs Test. Another important thing to know when writing code is something called variables. So for example, num is a variable, name, then you can put equals to assign it a value, and then 32. So num equals 32. You could also have something like word equals, and you need quotation marks, um, test. So you could do numbers or words, whatever you want. You can also do, you can have a number be a variable. Um, you can use um, underscores though, something like that. And then you can print num to, and then it will print out 32. You don't want to, you don't want quotation marks or it will actually print out the word num, not what value it's holding. Another useful thing is loops. So the while loop is a good example. What this does, it iterates through a loop as long as the condition is met. So the condition is usually a variable, then some operator that compares it. So you can do less than, greater to, greater than, greater than, greater than or equal to. Um, I'm going to put zero. So if num is greater than or equal to zero, then colon is required after a loop, after the first line of the loop. And then when you press enter, you'll notice here it indents this line. And this is very important. If you take away the uh, indent and just print, um, you'll get this error, expend, expected an indented block. And this is because if you have a loop, um, you need to indent a line. So, it t so you can tell, so the program can tell um, this code is part of the while loop. And if we have something outside of the while loop, that's fine. It just won't be looped. It'll just execute once. And then we can't run this right now 
as it is because it will be an infinite loop as num is always 32 and it's always greater than or equal to 0. So what we need is uh, let's change this back to num and then we need to go num is equal to num minus minus 1. And so Python has the normal um, operators minus plus multiplies the star and divide so num minus one will decrease num by one every time through the loop and this will terminate the loop once it hits uh, negative one and you can also do num minus minus as well and this is equivalent I'm going to comment this out though, like that. So you can write comments in your code to make more clear what you're doing or to just remove a line to test something temporarily. And it's this symbol right here, shift three, and it makes the text um, red. So you might have seen print is a function, so it's purple, while is orange, so it's a uh, operator, and we saw before text is green inside the quotations. And then if we run this, we get prints out 32 all the way to zero. So next, let's talk about if statements. So if statements are very important. It branches your program. So do this if this condition, or do this otherwise. So let's do if num is modulus. So this percent sign is mod or modulus. It takes the remainder of two values. So if you go mod two is equal to zero, Again, colon after if or loops. Um, this statement says it's basically checking if it's even because if it's divided by two and the remainder is zero, that means it's even. And notice we did two equals because we're comparing this to this, where up here it's one equals because we're assigning a value, assigning 32 to num. And then when we press enter, it indents it again. And it has to be to show it's in the if statement. We can write print even, then concatenate it with num, like that. So we'll put even space with whatever the value of num is. The next, we can have an elif statement, which says if this first condition isn't true, next, what do you do? So, for example, num equal to zero. We can print reached zero. We don't need multiple conditions, but I'm just going to show it in this example. So the third is else. You can have multiple elif statements, but you can only have one if and one else in one um, block. And again, you don't need all three. You can just have if if you want. And else is it's not even and it's not zero. So it's going to be odd numbers. Odd plus And then delete this, we save that and run it. We actually get this error here. And if you read this error, it says type error can only concatenate string, not integer to string. So this will happen a lot when you're writing code. So you'll run into many errors. So what we have here is we're trying to concatenate 
um, a string with a number. So we would, what we need to do is put str bracket num closing bracket. str is a function and it takes a number as input and it converts it to a string like this. Now if we run this, we will get our expected output, even, 32, odd, 31, all the way to 0. You might be thinking, why didn't it say reach zero? This is because it goes through this if statement in order. So zero is even, so it goes through this and it ignores all of this. So what we can do is put an and operator. You can also put or as well. So and num does not equal, which is exclamation equal, zero. And then run that. And it will ignore this one because it, it was zero. And it will s instead hit the second statement and print out reach zero. What we can also do is make the program more interesting. So instead of having 32 and just putting num as 32, you can put input, which is another function. And this accepts user input. So you can put please enter a number like this. And since it's a number, we need to put int uh, bracket bracket to convert this to a number. Um, otherwise, it would be a string, and then you can't well, you can't subtract a string. So if we do this, save that, and then run it, we will get please enter a number, and you can put any number, say forty two and it will print out all the numbers again. And you can also, if you want, there's this character um, backwards or forward slash, backwards slash n. Yeah, backwards slash. Um, and this is a new line character. So if you run this code, uh, 10, um, it puts a space in between your question and the outputs, as you see here. Then if you close your program like this, you can open it by going to File Open or Control O. You can navigate to where you saved it and open it like this. You can also open it by going to File Explorer and then just want to go edit with idle. And then this will bring up your program again and you can run it in this command line. 